Hi, I'm Rich Lee. I'm a cardiovascular person. Um, <clears throat> and most of you already know this, that chronic systolic heart failure remains one of the big problems in, in the world. <clears throat> it is getting better and better in the United States, but, but worldwide it's still a major problem. So m many patients who have heart attacks now, we can abort their heart attacks within minutes of arrival to the hospital. But hundreds of thousands of patients present every year <clears throat> with chronic systolic heart failure because their heart attacks occur before silently or they come in too late. And at that point, there's not much we can do except for watch them over time. <clears throat> so this remains a huge problem um, that we are making progress on, but we don't have any cures for this. So, <clears throat> so the, the biggest question to ask about this is, is this really a regenerative medicine target? The heart's really a tough target for a lot of reasons, but um, <clears throat> we've made great progress with medical therapy. Patients live for so many more years now, and there are great drugs that have been developed, one by Mark Hall, who was at Novartis and Tresto in the past <clears throat> five years. And these have really changed the natural history of heart failure. Patients live with the disease for very long periods of time. There are also patients who benefit from devices. And um, so many of you know that heart transplantation is kind of the ultimate therapy for heart failure. We do in the United States about 2,200 heart, heart transplants per year, about half of all of those that occur throughout the world. That's actually a small number compared <clears throat> with the number of patients in heart failure. So artificial hearts, they've been around for 50 years. They've been plagued by strokes. And it turns out that the vast majority of patients don't need an artificial heart. Uh, most of the artificial hearts have been, that have been designed are actually, for example, too big for women to use. And so and that is not a technology that most of us think is going to be as useful as pacemakers are for us today. Left ventricular assist devices are incredibly useful, and they are advancing and advancing. So these are the devices, similar to the one that Dick Cheney got, <clears throat> that take over from the left ventricle. These used to be big, huge consoles, but now they're wearable, and you can go years at home for, with these devices. So we now use those in patients who don't need heart transplants, and we're planning on them living with those forever. There's a lot of patients who are looking forward to another 30 or 40 years, and it would be really wonderful to have something that's really curative for them. <clears throat> so I am sorry to report that I personally believe that the majority of the heart regeneration trials that are being done throughout the world now, maybe there are about 15 serious attempts right now, I think 14 are going to fail, <clears throat> and the other one is going to have relatively modest impact because it's going to require immunosuppression. So it's a, it's a difficult challenge, but where is it going to leave us if all of these trials fail? Uh, why are these going to fail? A lot of them are based upon erroneous science over the past 15 years that adult stem cells were constantly repopulating the heart, and we now know that that concept is incorrect. <clears throat> so what is possibly going to work? Um, one thing is stimulation of heart regeneration with appropriate biological signals. That's something that we're all looking for. It's what Mark was referring to. If we can actually mimic the development of biology or the repair that the zebrafish and the axolotl do in the heart, that we can actually flip a switch for just long enough to actually get heart regeneration to occur. In lower animals, that occurs by myocytes dividing, and that's a real major target, I think, for our biological community. The other target is, can we actually get autologous cells into a patient? Can we take your heart cells and put them into your heart. And the funny thing is that right now, we actually have the technology to do that. We can make great heart cells. We can make functional heart cells. We can identify regions, I think, where the heart cells will survive. We can get them in by catheter, and we can re-sculpt the heart from the inside. But it's incredibly expensive, and the economics are really ugly. So the challenge, ultimately, for us is going to be, can we actually do this in a way that mimics the actual biology. And, and I think we can do it. It's going to take a lot of effort. Um, <clears throat> but ultimately, we might be able to look at that 55-year-old man and say, OK, you've got 40 years to go, maybe, in the modern world. So can we actually rebuild that heart tissue from the, from the inside with a catheter so that you can have normal myocardium for the rest of your life? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Good, thank you.